Hello and welcome back to the letter, and something's gonna occur down here because the place feels ominous. So, we're down the wine cellar and there's the mirror. And clearly it seems very important to the whole mansion. So the cellar greets me honestly as I descend. The space feels smaller with a lot more bottle lining the wall compared to before. And knowing what I might be... Might, and knowing what might be waiting for me here makes things worse. The mirror that had been moved from the study is my goal. I did not return to it after my initial discovery the thought of Lorraine. How much, I, how much I want to see her again, even if it's just for one more time, keeps coming back to my mind. As I walk through the cellar, I have to stop when I feel something crunch beneath my feet. There are a few... Whatever, a few balls were left behind. Here are now no are now nothing but class under my heels. Perhaps dropped by one of the many chefs and bartenders at the butler that has it sort of through here before. Oh my god, I can't speak. <laughs> and it might and it, uh, and it made a downright mess with a red with red slick pooling from the remnants of a good drink. That's how dark this place is. A person with a dark enough imagination could easily mistake it for blood. I can't help but think it is, despite the easy logical explanation that had come to my mind only because of what I might be, what I'm about to do. It's merely a momentary distraction as I continue to the end of the cellar, where the mirror stands. Why does this place have to be lit by torches? I wonder. I'm just questioning that. Um. Propped up on the far wall, it gleams instantly while pretending to be simple, simply an ordinary mirror. How more to think that this thing could show a person's their deepest, most desperate desires, and then twist it to imagine so dark. That's what I had seen that day. But I heard Lorraine many times. I had only seen her within its frames. I wonder if people have discovered it before. How many were wasted away in front of it, enamored, and how many were frightened away by what they saw? Yeah, as I stand before it now, nothing. <laughs> I could barely see my own reflection in this darkness. How does this even work? Mirror, mirror on the wall? Something? Anything? <laughs> nothing. Touching its surface doesn't make it magically activate or anything like that. There's no sudden surge of power, and I'm not suddenly granted sight. It stays what it is, a mirror. Was Lorraine's appearance in the mirror all some sort of fever dream? Am I really that burdened with guilt and despair that my mind would eat itself in my stress and have my hallucination have me hallucinate such things? Either way, just going here on some crazed obsession for a girl long gone must warrant me a trip to a doctor. Already I feel ill. After a few more minutes in the hopes that something would change, I turn around to leave. I could just go back upstairs like nothing ever happened, perhaps drop by the park for some harso de water, then go home and collect myself. Besides, Miss Fright is expecting me and I'm- Going to leave me again then, are you? I stop in my tricks, but I don't turn back. As much as it pains me, I don't look back. If I'm just hearing her again desperately delusional, I look back to see nothing. I don't want to give myself a false hope. When I feel fingers around my wrist pull at me, I look back in shock. Nope. Nope. It's not her. It's not her. It's not her. <laughs> First thought is, how in God's name is this possible? The second is, Lorraine. Her hand are cold. Are you that imagining me that cold. you're just going to ignore me, Marianne? I don't know what to say, and I could only stare at her in wonder. She stands there, in the mirror, with only her arm extended outward for my sake. I look at the hand still holding my wrist, and when she sees me looking at it, she moves it so that our hands are intertwined, fingers weaved together. Seeing her there and feeling her touch meant I'm not crazy, though however impossible and unexplainable this is all out to me right now, it just takes my breath away. Pulling her out from there is tempting. I can imagine doing so with ease. We could be together again, Lorraine and Marianne, like nothing had ever happened. 
So that would be all a great big lie, wouldn't what? it? What? Pack out your tongue? Don't just look at me like that. Say something. Even if this thing were some magic portal that could bring back the dead, that doesn't erase anything. Just looking at her still a younger teenager while I'm already a grown woman. So there's no other reason than to break the illusion that, that blinds me. I've seen her twice now. Always behind the mirror. This is real. If this is some delusion, then why can she only exist behind the glass? Yes. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. It's been so long. You don't look happy. I really am happy. But at the same time, I can't help but think about what happened to you. And what does that mean? What are you saying? She gives me this peculiar look. Before my eyes, she moves a step out of the mirror. In turn, I wrench my hand from her and take a step back, almost as if I'm afraid. I don't know how this is possible. But whatever this is, it isn't real. You can't be real. I'm just going to be ready if I have to start running. <laughs> I'm right here, aren't I? What other proof do you need? No, no. I see you. I hear you. I feel you. But even with all that, you can't be real. You just can't. I saw your body. I helped bury you. You're dead. Deep hurt crosses her face and and it just breaks my heart in two, seeing her wear that expression. Burying me wasn't the only thing you did. Don't you dare lie. But I'm going to be the bigger woman, aren't I? Let bygones be bygones. I'll forgive you. As long as you stay with me, Marianne. Nope, we're That's not staying. you came down here, right? To find me? That was the plan. I came down here looking for, for closure. But this isn't. This isn't the, just closure. This is something else entirely. I didn't think I'd be forced to make such a choice. No, we're not- oops, hit the mic. We're not staying. Nope. Because this is not her. I need to move on. Closure, that's all I came here for. Whatever this is, it might as well be just the devil's trick. And I might as well make sh some use of it, right? I say nothing at first, fear of angering whatever phantom this is. Take Lorraine's hand and bring it to my lips, pressing a kiss to her knuckles. She takes it as some sort of invitation to pull me along, step back into the mirror until only her arm is extended again. I should have been more honest back then, both to you and myself. I know it's too late. I'm sorry. But... But the thought of being with the dead did not agree with me. Not one bit. I can't stay with you. Goodbye, my first love. So what? You're going to leave me for some old trophy wife? What? That's it, isn't it? You're going to leave poor Amy Lorraine and go after the next rich, pretty blonde that you see. This is a mistake. All these years, guilt has been my driving force. I felt so guilty for what I did. What I didn't do. She thinks she could guilt me into being complacent. But she, real she realizes otherwise as I pull my hand from her. And going by the look of anger on her face, anger that runs cold, she did not like the fact that I'm not some puppet on a string. Had she chosen her words carefully, I would have accepted whatever punishment Lorraine chooses to give me. Guilt had ran my life and it might very well ended it. Because I deserved it. But what it. I did, I did to me. The blood in my hands is mine. Not yours. So this is probably where you probably could kill Mary Ann, I would assume, by accepting whoever this phantom is. Whoever, whoever this shadow is, my gut tells me she's not Lorraine. Yeah, I keep talking as if she is. I broke your heart. Not your neck. Don't you dare deny it! It was your fault! Because I loved you more than I dare to admit? Yes, that was my fault. But I never meant to hurt you like that. Despite, word, despite my words, no matter how sincere they are, she appears angry, enraged, in fact. It's been years since I last saw that face, and even now, the memory of it still etched deeply in my mind. The hurt, the tears, and the hate spilling from her eyes that day. 
the moment I rejected her. Rejected myself for who I am. She definitely will hate what I am about to do next. To my left, a wine rack. And from there, I take a bomb pri pray to all the saints I can remember. For all my sins, and for every hurtful words I've uttered. For I've driven her to do that day. What I forced her what into. What are you doing? I do it without thinking twice. Quickly before I could hesitate, grab a bottle and send it straight towards the mirror. Oh! <laughs> Shards of the bottle and the mirror are sent flying everywhere as Lorraine's screams echo in the cellar. Bitter. Searing. Like every wondering ex accusation she hurled at me. They've never, they've never left me. I doubt they ever will. But with this, I can move away from them. From her. Live my life as I should. Free from the burden. Her burden. Because the Lorraine I know, the real one, the person I loved, will never want me carrying this to my death. A scream as eyes down, I can't help but mutter weakly. It's done. It's done. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Oh, Lorraine. Forgive me, Lorraine. I take some time to compose myself, breathing in and out. Stamping down on the tremors still racking my head, hands, straining out my jacket and fixing my hair. All a weak attempt at returning myself to someone resembling my normal self. This would probably be easier to do so with a mirror, but I likely won't be able to stand looking at one for a long time. Well now, I should probably go back up there. Party to attend, rich socialites to do business with and food to eat. Mrs. Wright will be happy if I make some time for it anyway. Yet one last time to the shattered glass beneath my feet. I'm sorry, Lorraine. May you see God's light on the path. Turning around to leave and for good this time, the uneasy smile on my face falls as I see Lorraine whole and well. Come on, Mac. You really didn't think it would be that easy, did you? You get bonus points for trying. Um. Did I fuck up somewhere in this? Sorry. <laughs> but you should know an eight and charisma is not enough to turn on dead. Okay then. She advances towards me, backs me against the wall. I can't even reach for another wine ball without putting myself within her reach. Despite my earlier bravado, I didn't think she'll be able to exist at all without the mirror. Can you blame me though? It's not like I'm an expert on the supernatural. That's not you shouldn't be! What, out of the mirror? Did you think just moving on will erase what you did to me? You're nothing but a murderer, Marianne! A murderer! Stay back! You're not real! Leave me alone! Stop! I'm trying to move on with my life, so why won't you let me? Please! Just get out of my head and leave me be! Try to find an exit when there's a click. Next thing I know, I'm falling back into darkness. Oh, hello. I fall on my back and a door slams shut behind me. What is this place? Uh, okay. So she's not going to get to the party. So in days I look around warily and find myself in another room entirely. Other side of the wall, some sort of secret passage perhaps. An underground tunnel that was that has me wary and frightened. It also proves that the oddities in the mansion's floor plan are a lot more than just little dis Bear with me. Huh. Oh. It also proves that the oddities in the mansion's floor plans are a lot more than just little discrepancies. I expect Lorraine to jump at me from the darkness at any time. Breeze blowing through the tunnel has me relieved, though, at the idea that there is still a way to escape sh should that happen. This is way better than being trapped underground with only God knows what that was. A funny thought comes to mind as I start walking to where the exit might be. I think about how Miss Wright would be so disappointed if I didn't show up to the party. I imagine how furious Mrs. Mr. Wright would be for breaking one of his wine bottles. Even Johanna's reactions comes to mind, though I don't really know what... I really don't know 
with that guy. One thing's for sure is that I would be calling Cam and Harana for a drink as soon as I get out of there. Fuck! That noise has me worry. Ghastly thing, course of a woman, leans on the wall. Her arms and limbs almost every inch of her lift body. It's prepped with wounds and rotting flesh. It is then the putrid smell of blood and gore. Why, did the background change by chance? No, I don't think it has. Well, blood and gore hits me, making it so that I don't even question how I missed it in the first place. How long has this been here? Ugh, oh, that smell! Oh, you're a nasty one, aren't you? Flinch at the thing twitches. As soon as it opens its eyes and looks at me with a smile, there's nothing on my mind but horror. I break into a run. Let me be ready for having to click a button to run? I try to keep on running no matter how much my legs and feet scream at me to stop. I keep going even when I look back and see nothing of her anymore because I can still hear her. Scamping up, scampering up her feet, the words she tries to form with her bloodied mouth. The painful sounds of bones grinding against each other. She moves closer and closer to me. How long are these damn tunnels? There's a split second when I know that the thing is right behind me, a strange sensation creeping over my limbs when her present looms over me. And suddenly, I can't even do anything before I'm yanked by the hair and pulled back. Still, I struggle up until I'm thrown to the side like some ragdoll. At the ground on my side and the musty smell of old hay that re reaches me is my only indication that I'm still alive. Please don't hurt me! My body hurts and I keep my eyes shut tight, afraid of what might happen What's next. What's wrong, Marianne? Are you really afraid of little old me? That's not you. There's only dread seeing how she's followed me over here. She leans over me, backs me further in the cell that I was thrown in. Oh, the opening! The opening casting, this is where she is in that scene. Please, it's so cold. I don't want to be alone, Marianne. Fuck you, Lorraine, ghost thing or whatever you may be. Why won't you stay with me? Why would you leave me? Why? Because you're trying to kill us. What are you? A rain turns and shifts into that thing from before. With that same gruesome grant, takes a step forward towards the cell. Towards me. Barely scrambled to my knees when the door of the cell slams shut and it just stands there staring. Shouts for help rings out in the tunnels. But none of them are coming for me. I'm more paralyzed and shocked by what is happening. My throat, is, my throat tight ends up being fooled by the image of Lorraine. Thought being trapped down here. So then where? Help me, help me, oh help me! Are you getting all this on camera, Carl? Daredevil student? Wait, is that the mansion? Yeah, but are you going sure this is a good idea? We're breaking and entering here. Don't worry, the owners of this place haven't been here in a long time. <laughs> Look at this thing though! It has writing in blood like some cheesy 80s horror prop. Wait, I have an idea. Oh man, that's genius! Wait, are, did they make the letter? What kind of butthead would even take this thing seriously? Maybe we can stick this in Rowan's backpack. That's why his kid would panic. Guys? Guys? Prank gone wrong? What the heck? What? Spit it out! Behind you! They're in the corner. Okay, they're in the corner of the cell. A digital camera comes flickering to life. And a video has played back on the screen. Uh, how long? Okay. It was hard to even consider paying any attention to it when my life is on the line. When the ghost doesn't move and the teeners mocking shouts of help, he f helps help me fill the cell. I just had to watch, and why I'd seen soon, judging by the Saint Gretti uniforms, they were holding. 
that thing, the woman, she... <laughs> what the heck? What did I just witness? Trying to escape the fan now trapped in one of its cells, she found a recording left behind by someone Mansion's victims. But it was that woman. Cause we've seen cause that was Wasn't that Miss Ermengard? And now he plays Rebecca. Uh profiles. What can, what information can we get of her? She's just a history teacher. I raised a Kirk, but she's an atheist. Okay. This is how it begins, or so they say. The gentle wind. So what is going to happen? We've not seen her that often, just as Marianne. So what happens with her? Um, uh, hold on. Let me look at my relationships. Wait, what? <laughs> Cause I can understand that being dropped. I guess there was something we did with Isabel or maybe Zach that caused the relationship with Ashton to also go down. Cause the starting point with them is not good. Cause it's already down. Huh. The gentle wind drifting through wide, wide open windows, muffled laughter, the footsteps fading behind empty hallways, the light kiss, the afternoon sun. Soon there will be a cell. <sighs> Not a cell. Would be a call, crossing a threshold into the unknown. Maybe we are off to some grand adventure, diving into another gripping mystery. One can't really tell. For all I know, a hero might even come sweep me off my feet if I'm lucky. That's not exactly a bad thing when you think about it. But this is far from one, isn't it? A riveting tale, that is. So, are we going to have the conversation with Isabel first? Mild breeze, the faint murmurs, the warm rays painting every nook and cranny's fiery hue. They are all as real as they can get. As much as I want to write. A little tale out of it, this not far from someone who can. Fleeting fancies, that's what these are. Merely passing thoughts to occupy an idle mind, while waiting for another busy workday to end. Then again, maybe in another life I am one. Who knows? But present, what I have and what I've chosen be, well I won't last years here if I find teaching rowdy adolescents a tedious job, will I? <laughs> Admittedly, the whole affair isn't exactly as grand or exciting as I had imagined as a child. If I wasn't too stubborn, too passionate about the whole idea, I probably would have quit a long time ago. I want to say this is a different version of the main song, but I could be wrong. Uh, but it's always a s it's always the kids that make it worthwhile, isn't it? As if in agreement, as soon as my pen slides into a neat circle against the papers, I'm grading the final bell rings. Like a, like a dam that has opened, students begin piling out into the hallway soon after. For a short minute, I let the noise fill my ears, let my mind wander to a place far removed from all the hubbub. Solitary moments like this have come few and far between lately. Even my own home hasn't been as quiet as usual. As, us as usually, I prefer. Though in hindsight, the entire place hasn't been the same either, since Isabel moved in next door. And if her fussing over a minor, minor cold last week tells anything, I might as well throw any idea of solitude out the nearest balcony, so long as she lives nearby. And the memory in my eyes automatically shifts over the ball sitting at the edge of my desk. <laughs> Okay, so this is right after she's left. So a chuckle escapes me from as I reach. A little forward. ball of energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> that <a> big baby. <laughs> Mother Hen, she calls me. They say, and then says and does the same thing right after. It's not that I'm used to being on the receiving end, 
other people's worries, or I feel any sort of apprehension over her fretting. If I am to be completely honest, it's actually amusing how someone can be childlike one minute and act like a responsible adult the next. But there's a dis dishonest dis uh, words. <laughs> there's a dishonest dis dissonance there, both in her actions and words. Although she may not look like it, may not say anything, may not lose her cheer one way or another. I know there's troubles. I know these troubles have weighed down on her lately. Her face says it all. That... that big numpty. If she thinks I won't know, she's got another thing coming for her. That's how she has always been. I do understand that part. Loud and clear, it's just that... I'd really rather not pass another burden onto her. Or become one myself. Aren't I supposed to be the one taking care of them? Though I guess... That's simply one of those things people eventually grow away from, once you've all started leading different lives. Not completely different, I hope. Somehow, though, that thought makes me feel uneasy. Thankfully, before stranger ideas can take root in my head, a faint buzzing comes from my bag, cutting through the rest of my thoughts. An unknown call? Small frown forms on my lips when the screen lights up and an unknown number flashes. For a long second, my thumb hovers over the answer button. I mean, the voice that responds once I do accept the call is wholly unfamiliar. Hello? Oh, goodness. Finally, it connects. Who? Hello? Is this Miss Gales? Rebecca Gales. Rose? Yes, I... Yes, speaking. Uh, who is this? Oh, sorry. Rose Cooper. Briar oh. Realty Corporation. Briar Realty? My frown deepens as I strain my chair. Strain my chair. Something in her tone, despite sounding remarkably friendly and light, doesn't sit quite well with me. The rigid pause that followed doesn't help ease the tension that has suddenly descended either. Miss Cooper? I... Yes. Things are a bit busy on my end, I apologize. I'm not certain if Isabella has mentioned anything before, but we're working together on a property at the moment, and... The Armagod Mansion, yes. She said something about that earlier. Is there a problem? This is about Isabella, actually. She wasted no time relaying any everything. The details she provides are admittedly a bit vague, but enough for me to get a gist of what happened. It isn't the bad sort I'm expecting, though, still worrying. Especially with the words, Pantak and a pale look a bit sickly, moving together in one foreboding sentence. As quickly as it surfaces, I stomp down the urge the man answers right there and then. Now isn't the proper time for useless questions, I'll find out soon enough regardless. Miss Cooper's credit, she neither hesitates nor falters all throughout. There's some sort of comfort in knowing Isabel has someone like her to guide her, though not as much as I would have liked. After all, this is Isabel we're talking about. What are the chances she's just a bunch of ex- uh, She just said a bunch of excuses she so she won't get sent home. High, very high. Oh, she is going to hear the you song. How is she? I is she doing okay? I had her take a break for now, but honestly, I'd feel better if someone were to pick her up and take her home for some rest. Anthem's a fair distance from Luxbourne. I really don't want her going off on her own. I'd do it myself, but... Oh, you know how it is today. Big day. People everywhere until the open house ends. I'm really sorry to ask this of you, Miss Gales. I know you're busy. Oh no, no, it's all good. I was just about to leave from work. I hope to leave early today anyway. A few minutes ahead wouldn't hurt. I can be there in a few, uh, 30, 40 minutes tops? Is that all right? More than fine, Miss Gales, thank you. We're supposed to be here until... Oh, excuse me, one moment, please. Yes, ma'am. I hey, hum a conversation echoes from her end. Sounds as though the place is buzzing with more people than you'll expect from a regular open house. 
I was skeptical at first. The house is old, not to mention its inconvenient location in Luxembourg's outskirts. Who wants to live in a place almost an hour's drive away from the comforts of a city? But from what little I can hear, Piers Isabel has every right to be optimistic about this sale. If I didn't understand why she was so adamant refusing my offer to of help before, I think I do now. To some degree. I'll be resuming the tour soon. Yes, thank you. Home is cheaper. Sorry about that. I really need to get this thing going. Or not, uh, Marianne. Lord knows how I'll salvage the situation here. It shouldn't be anything complicated, but still, clients. It can be difficult when they want to be. Anyway, just look for me when you get here, all right? I shouldn't be too hard to miss. No problem. Thanks for letting me know about this. Just... Just make sure Isabella stays put, please. Heaven knows how stubborn that girl can be. Oh, believe me, I know. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll have a few of our staff keep an eye on her for me until you get here. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. I appreciate it. The whole thing ends on a surprisingly pleasant note. If only the same can be said for the news she brought. I'll allow a brief minute to pass to ease whatever tension has latched itself firmly to my nerves. No matter how much I wish for it, mine stubbornly refuses to do so. Hands are unsteady against the papers, pretend to arrange after. Lucid thoughts every single ounce of it grimmer than the other grows with each passing second and linger. Something about this whole thing along with the sudden unease and nagging worry screams off, wrong, this isn't the riveting tale I've hoped to step into today. Well, I got a lot of things coming. So before I continue on, I'm actually going to have to end it here. So if you guys enjoyed the video, go hit the like or up a button. If you want to see more of what will happen next, go hit the subscribe or follow button to be notified of whatever I make. Anything to say, say in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Comrades!